गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू फिफ्थ पार्ट ऑफ न्यू सीरीज ऑफ वीडियो लेक्चर्स विच कंप्राइजेज एम सी क्यूज ऑन इंग्लिश लिटरेचर फ्रॉम एंग्लो सेक्शन टू ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी एंड आई होप इट विल बी वेरी हेल्पफुल फॉर नॉट ओनली योर अपकमिंग टी जी टी पी जी टी एंड यू जी सी नेट एग्जाम्स बट ऑल्सो फॉर ऑल अदर इंग्लिश टीचर्स रिक्रूटमेंट एग्जाम्स ओके नाउ लेट्स स्टार्ट अ लॉन्ग नेरेटिव पोएम Christabel is written by option A Matthew Arnold option B S T Coleris option C William Wordsworth and option D P B Shelley So Christabel is a long narrative poem it's a ballad by Samuel Taylor Coleridge in two parts the first part was repeatedly written in 1797 and the second in 1800 so your right option will be b st coleridge okay next question who said poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world kisne kaha tha kavi sansar ke anjane vidhayak hain option a p b shelley in his a defense of poetry option b sir philip sidney in his the defense of poetry and option c matthew arnold in his thyrsis and option d william wordsworth in his the prelude let me explain it in his essay a defense of poetry written in 1821 and first published posthumously means after death in 1840 in essays letters from abroad translations and fragments by edward maxson in london Percy Bysshe Shelley claims that poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. So your right option will be A. P. B. Shelley in his A Defense of Poetry. All right. Next question. Which of the following statement or statements is are correct about Sestina? First statement is. it is an elaborate verse form from petrar second statement is it is a slow moving six line stanza with each stanza using the same words to end the lines but in a different order let's see the options option a statement first correct option b statement two correct option c statement one and two correct and option d statement 1 correct 2 incorrect here both statements are correct so option c will be correct here all right let's see next question how many eclogues are there in the poem the shepherd's calendar here eclogue is a short poem especially a pastoral dialogue let's see the options option a 9 option b 10 option c 11 option d 12 so in the poem the shepherd calendar there are 12 eclogues let me explain all 12 eclogues in detail the eclogues that occur in the poem the shepherd's calendar are number 1 january eclogue the shepherd colin cloud who is spencer himself complains of his unrequited love for rosalind Number two, the February eclogue tells the story of the oak and the briar. Third, the March eclogue gives the dialogue of two shepherds, Thumlin and Billy. Number four, the April eclogue, after an introductory dialogue between Thinot and Hobbinol in flexible decasyllabic quatrains. introduces a formal song in praise of elizabeth number 5 the may eclogue a dialogue between two shepherds in which through the obvious pastoral disguise spencer attacks idle deceitful and worldly high church clergy whose fondness for elaborate ritual offended spencer's protestant idealism number 6 the june eclogue colin complains not only of his lack of success in love 
but of his lack of success in his poetry and his generally unsettled condition. Number seven, the July eclogue, the proud shepherd, Morel argues with the humble and conscientious Thomlin, who concludes by praising Elgrin as the type of the good shepherd. Number eight, the August eclogue, gives a singing match with a charming roundelay, a short, which is a short, simple song with a refrain by Perigot and Willie, followed by a much more formal sestina by Kaddi. Number nine is the September Eclogue, a dialogue between Habinol and Digon Devi. Number 10, the October Eclogue, Kaddi's complaints that the age of great poetry is dead. Number 11, the November Eclogue, which is a lament for the death of some maiden of great blood, whom he calleth Dido. And the last one, number 12 is the December Eclogue, is an imitation of Marotus Eclogue, Aurai, in which the poet looks back over his poetic career. All right, now let's see next question. The Fairy Queen by Edmund Spencer is option A, an epic poem, yani Mahakavya Kavita, option B, a pastoral poem, Dehati Kavita, option C, a lyric poem, yani Gitatma Kavita, option D, a ballad, yani Gatha Git. So let me explain it. The Fairy Queen is an English epic poem by Edmund Spencer. The first three books, book one to third of The Fairy Queen were first published in 1590 and books four to six appeared in 1596. Here right option will be A, an epic poem. Next question is The Ruins of Time by Spencer published in a volume of minor poems in 1591 entitled Complaints Containing Sundry Small Poems of the World's Vanities. Option A, an elegiac poem written in slow moving rhyme royal. Option B, its structure is borrowed from uh, Du Bellis Antiquities de Rome. Option C, its theme combines the general medieval ubisant motif with reflections on the deaths of the Earl of Leicester, Sir Philip Sidney and Sir Francis Walsingham. And option D is all of these. Here the right option will be D, all of these. The Tears of the Muses is the second poem of the complaints written in a stanza rhyming A, B, A, B, C, C. It is more satirical than elegiac in tone and laments the decay of the arts and other abuses of the time in a rather mechanical manner. Each of the nine muses speaks her complaint. Next one is Virgil's knot and uh, next one is Mother Hubbard's tell, a skillful and spirited satire on contemporary affairs in the form of a beast fable. Alright, now let's see next question. Which of the following poems by Spencer tells of Sir Walter Raleigh's visit to Spencer in Ireland and Spencer's subsequent visit to London with Raleigh where he was graciously received by Queen Elizabeth? Option A is Mother Hubbard's tale. Option B, Astrophel, a pastoral elegy. Option C, the shepherdess calendar. And option D, Colin clouds come home again. Let me explain it. Colin clouds come home again, published in 1595, is one of the freshest, most personal and most attractive of Spencer's occasional poems. It tells through a simple and easily penetrated pastoral elegy of Sir Walter Raleigh's visit to Spencer in Ireland and Spencer's subsequent visit to London with Raleigh 
देयर ही वॉज ग्रेसियसली रिसीव्ड बाई क्वीन एलिजाबेथ दिस पोएम इज डिकेबिक क्वेश्चन विथ अल्टरनेटिंग राइम्स ये राइट ऑप्शन इज डी कोलिन क्लाउड्स कम होम अगेन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग वर्क बाय स्पेंसर इज मॉडल्ड ऑन बायोनस लैमेंट फॉर एडोनिस ऑप्शन ए स्ट्रोफेल ऑप्शन बी एमोरेटी ऑप्शन सी द फेरी क्वीन एंड ऑप्शन डी नन ऑफ दिस स्पेंसर रूट दिस पास्टोरल एलर्जी इन टाइटल्ड एस्ट्रोफेल आफ्टर द प्री मेच्योर डेथ ऑफ हिस फ्रेंड सर फिलिप सिडनी एट द बैटल ऑफ जुथफेन इन फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड एटी सिक्स ये राइट ऑप्शन इज ए एस्ट्रोफेल नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग वर्क और वर्क्स बाय स्पेंसर इज आर लव सोनेट और सोनेट्स इन द पेट्रार्कन मोड एमोरेटी एपिथेलेमियन द फेरी क्वीन नन ऑफ दिस हियर द राइट ऑप्शन इज ए एमोरेटी Emirati by Spencer is love sonnet in the Petrarchan mood, and total number of sonnets in Emirati are eighty nine. Next question is: In which poem Spencer celebrates his love for Elizabeth Boyle? Epithelium, Emirati, Astrophel, all of these. The right option is A. Epithelium. In the poem Epithelium. Spencer celebrates his love for Elizabeth Boyle. All right. Now next question is Prothelemian, fifteen ninety six, a wedding poem written for the double wedding of option A, Lady Elizabeth to Henry Guilford, option B, Lady Catherine Somerset to William Peter, and option C, both A and B, and option D, none of these. So Lady Elizabeth and Lady Catherine Somerset. were the daughters of the earl of worcester here right option is c both a and b next question the concluding refrain sweet thames run softly till i end my song is from spencer's option a epithelemian option b prothelemian option c the fairy queen and option d amorite let me explain it the concluding refrain Sweet Thames run softly till I end my song is from Spencer's poem Prothelemian published in 1596 it is a nuptial or you can say nuptial uh, which means of or relating to a wedding song composed by Edmund Spencer on the occasion of the twin marriage of the daughters of the earl of Worcester Elizabeth Somerset and Catherine Somerset All right. Here, option B will be correct. Prothelemian. Next question is: The four hymns or hymns, a song of praise, published by Spencer, or in the honor of option A, love and beauty; option B, heavenly love and heavenly beauty; option C, both A and B; and option D, none of these. So in 1596, Spencer published his four hymns. The first two hymns in the honor of love and beauty, uh, being early works, and the later two hymns in honor of heavenly love and of heavenly beauty, being written much later. The right option is C, both A and B. All right. Next question. Milton wrote Paradise Lost in. option a free verse option b blank verse option c haiku and option d limerick okay uh, now let me explain all these literary terms like free verse blank verse haiku and limerick first blank verse is a literary device which is free from the limitations of regular meter or rhythm and uh, does not rhyme with fixed forms such poems are without rhythm and rhyme schemes and uh, do not follow regular rhyme scheme rules blank verse is a literary device defined as an unrhyming verse written in iambic pentameter it is also known as unrhymed iambic pentameter it has a consistent meter with 10 syllables in each line known as pentameter haiku is 
a Japanese form of poetry that consists of short, unrhymed lines. The most common structure of haiku features three lines of five, seven, and five syllables, respectively. A limerick is a poem that consists of five lines in a single stanza with a rhyme scheme of A A B B A. In another words, limerick is a humorous verse form of five anapestic lines with a rhyme scheme A A B B A. All right. Now next question is, who wrote the general end of all the book is to fashion a gentleman or noble person in virtuous and gentle discipline? Option A, Edmund Spencer. Option B, Sir Walter Raleigh. Option C, William Shakespeare. And Option D, John Milton. Let me explain it. Edmund Spencer wrote a letter to Sir Walter Raleigh prefixed to the edition of 1590, expounding his whole intention in the course of this work, in which he declared that the general end of all the book is to fashion a gentleman or noble person in virtuous and gentle discipline. So your right option will be A. Edmund Spencer. Next question is, whose influence can be found on Spencer? Homer and Virgil, Aristo and Tasso, both A and B and none of these. The right option is C, both A and B. Both Homer and Virgil and Aristo and Tasso's influence can be found on Spencer. Alright, next question is, how many books did Spencer plan for the fairy queen? Option A, 9 books, Option B, 10 books, Option C, 11 books, and Option D, 12 books. Edmund Spencer originally planned for his poem, The Fairy Queen, one of the great long poems in the English language, to have been a religious, moral, political allegory in 12 books. Somewhere 24 books is given, each consisting of the adventures of a knight, representing a particular moral virtue, but we have just seven, the last being incomplete. The first three books, books uh, first to third were published in 1590 and the second three books fourth to sixth in 1596. Here right option will be D, 12 books. Okay, now let's see next question. The first folio edition containing Spencer's first six books and a fragment of book seventh appeared in option A 1608, option B 1609, option C 1610 and option D 1611. In 1609, 10 years after Spencer's death, a folio edition was published containing the first six books and a fragment of book 7 entitled Two Cantos of Mutability. So your right option is B, 1609. Now next question, who remarked about the epic fairy queen as of interlocked stories of chivalrous adventure in a world of marvels? Kisne Mahakav fairy queen ke baare mein Chamatkaro ki dunia mein veer sahasik ki interlocked kahaniya ke roop mein tipdi ki. Option A. Lytton Stachy. Option B. C.S. Lewis. Option C. Ben Johnson. And Option D. None of these. Here right option is B. C.S. Lewis. And the last question is. Sleep after toil. Port after stormy seas. Ease after war. Death after life does greatly please. In which book of Fairy Queen do the above lines occur? Book 1st, Book 2nd, Book 3rd and Book 4th. Fairy Queen is an English Christian humanist epic. These lines are spoken to entrap the Red Cross Knight into despair and suicide. So your right option is A. Book 1st. Alright students, that's all about today's video lecture. I'll be back soon with another video lecture. Till then, take care. Goodbye.